Hello, good people. Welcome to our show. Hello, bad people. Welcome. Today we are going to discuss about ACO, how to create your strategy, how we need to consider AI today, because for me, it's a must have. If you want to create great content, high quality content, you need to use AI. And I disagree completely if someone can take say that AI uh, only creates generic stuff. You can create great high quality content if you do it right. And I grew my results. I got a lot of traffic by using AI content. I don't care if um, this content is AI written or not. Uh, and uh, I think Google is on the same boat. Google uh, is looking for uh, quality. So if you can provide quality with AI, you can get great results. I'm so excited to discuss a lot more with Dida Grigorov. How are you? Hello, and th thanks for having me. I'm fine. Thanks. What about you guys? Yeah, uh, big pleasure to get on my show. Uh, I want to learn more. Yeah. And I found... Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, I, I found it's important to update what you have. If you have something that works, that's cool. But you need to update, you need to improve. And uh, I changed a lot of uh, well-working approaches. I remember in 2008, I started my journey, digital journey. Mm -hmm. And uh, I changed a lot. Uh, because at uh, that time we mm. paid attention to create content, we paid attention to acquire backlinks. Uh, mm. I, it's important today as well, but we have many other algorithms that we need to satisfy. Uh, we had a team of writers who wrote about anything. We gave them all topics uh, that you can imagine, you know. Uh, and today I cooperate only with experts who know specific topic. Uh, Dida, before we start, just tell me about yourself, experience, background, and anything that can help our listeners to learn more about you. Yeah, I will be very happy to do it. Yes, okay. So I have about 22 years of professional experience in SEO. Yes, I started when I was a kid. Uh, when I was nobody talked about SEO, but it was there. Uh, actually, I'm very happy that uh, um, the rumoring around uh, SEO started almost uh, uh, almost immediately after Google has been launched. Uh, not exactly immediately, but let's say one or two years after that, uh, uh, so people could realize that uh, it's possible to optimize a website according to specific keywords so uh, you can get uh, better positions, you can get more traffic and so on. But it was way easier compared to now. Uh, 2007 was uh, one of these uh, important years for me because this is where I started playing with Python. And I was um, much more interested in the software development, software engineering, and I made the connection between software engineering, between the, um, uh, all the processes involved there, along with the uh, the current, I would say, the current tests uh, with uh, artificial intelligence uh, during that time. If I can say it, artificial intelligence, it was more machine learning and data science. Uh, but I made the parallel between uh, both of them and um, tried to implement as much as possible uh, also reading a lot uh, from uh, the blog of Bill Slavsky and several different uh, websites. Um, rest in peace, Bill Slavsky. It was an amazing find. Uh, so, and uh, after that, I started um, programming in Python, uh, doing lots of research stuff with uh, different Python libraries. It was version uh, 2.7, and now I work with 3.11. So uh, things uh, have changed and they um, they evolved uh, really much within the time. So, um, yeah, uh, and I have about 10 years uh, in software development uh, industry. Uh, I mean, more into the programming stuff with uh, Python. I also have tested uh, many Java solutions, Golang stuff, C++, and so on. But I mean, my main experience is uh, with uh, Python. Currently, I'm uh, I'm the head of the content department uh, of uh, the most renowned uh, the SEO agency in Bulgaria called uh, Serpact. Mm -hmm. Nice, love love your experience, great experience. And okay. um, what uh, 
I like today that you don't need to be a technical guy to use mm -hmm. AI. So mm -hmm. uh, of course it's important to have these skills uh, mm -hmm. with Python, but uh, today we have uh, a bunch of opportunities for someone who is non uh, mm -hmm. technical uh, to get results. And I play a lot with AI. I cooperate with people who know Python uh, because we uh, handle uh, different projects for investing, trading niches. We got great results, and um, I love. To cooperate with these people they can uh, provide another level of uh, uh, <laughs> creating and developing something new uh, and did i, I want to ask about your um, background in uh, python uh, more can you help how it helps you with seo and uh, uh, can you advise others uh, what to learn because python is a big niche you know <laughs> you, uh, i'm not sure it's you can find the stop of learning python it's updating all the time but can you tell how it helps you to get results in seo yeah uh, for sure mm there is a short and there is a long explanation i will try to summarize it uh otherwise maybe we will talk until tomorrow guys <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes so uh python is a very versatile uh, language uh, you can do uh, really a lot uh, but there is one important thing actually i was uh, recently asked by a colleague uh, i want to learn python and i want to use it in my python strategies what to do the question, the answer is that um, you need to still understand at least the basics of the software engineering. What I mean is that um, you can just learn a uh, programming language just like that. Um, there are lots of uh, interconnected things with, uh, between the conceptions of the software engineering and Python and how Python might help you. Um, in, in the SEO, there is a short answer. Actually, the short answer is just test uh, and learn how to use libraries, how to use different frameworks and how to combine them. Same applies for the machine learning models, large language models now, there are very good frameworks like, uh, let's say, Langchain, which, which is a great example. Uh, but the, sh the, the long answer here is that you, you still need these math foundations. The, uh, I mean, the mathematical foundation, like uh, understanding uh, at least the basics of the discrete ma math, uh, linear algebra, uh, also um, calculus. Maybe this will help you. This will help you a lot because uh, there are people who really would like to play with the models, just like me. I like playing with models. I like modifying models. I like creation of new models. And uh, once you do it, if you want to do it, you have to understand math. It's almost impossible if you don't understand it. Yeah, but you can still play even without the math, even without the engineering skills. You can play with the uh, ready to go, um, let's say that, that way, um, libraries and the models. Uh, Hugging Face is a very good uh, source of um, uh, this kind of models and data sets. You can also use Kaggle so you can um, train your skills. You can gain and uh, gain better knowledge and you can try to implement this knowledge uh, into uh, your SEO strategies. If I have to talk about me personally, I use lots of stuff. Um, I love playing with large language models. I love playing with different co co the combination between different machine learning models so I can extract, for example, entities i can extract people also ask, ask questions contextualized of course uh over uh, all around a specific particular um phrase uh, i'm looking after for a specific project um i also love doing this nlp uh, analysis of uh, content relevance analysis with contextual uh stuff like cohere for example i really love cohere and i very much uh work with them uh, because uh, uh, actually it, it's a company created by ex-Googlers and they implemented some really interesting and smart solutions for um, text generation, classification, ranking, re-ranking. So you can, uh, if you know how to program, of course, you can create a, a ranking predictor, you can create a ranking stuff with these um, uh, libraries, but also you, you have the option to uh, modify the models uh, so they can fit your needs. But actually, uh, if I have to summarize, Python helps me a lot because I can automate, lo automate lots of stuff. Uh, I can, um, I can, I, I find a lot, lots of creativity when it comes to the SEO.
and a lot of secrets has been revealed to me thanks to python and thanks to many libraries because uh, as i usually love to say uh, most of the secrets are actually within this soft uh, within this software engineering uh, conceptions in the programming languages and they are supporting libraries because in the end of the day search engines are softwares they're yeah. based on software engineering principles so uh, the the uh, the intersection point is a very big one. So yeah, yeah. I use it day to day. I use it day to day. Nice, nice. You know, I need to share this episode with my son. Uh, he hates mathematics. He loves soccer, <laughs> and he told me uh, he doesn't need maps. He wants to play soccer, and that's it. You know, <laughs> to become a new Leo Messi or Cristiano Ronaldo. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> but uh, I wanna tell him it's important to learn. It doesn't matter if you love playing soccer, just do it. Of course, it's important to uh, uh, go with your passion, but. It's important to learn as well to get education, to read books, to learn mm -hmm. mathematics and he hates it <laughs> yes uh when it comes to the seo uh job let's say that way, as a profession i wouldn't say that uh, programming is a mandatory skill at least not for now let's mm -hmm. see what uh, google has for us in the future because uh, we see that there is a new model a very revolutionary one called gemini so we will see uh, i believe we will see a totally new era uh, when it comes to the searching uh, experience and uh, uh, information retrieval at all. But for now, I strongly believe that uh, programming is, is for people who really would like to dive, dig deeper into uh, the stuff. And of course, mm -hmm. it's, it's all about where you set your boundaries. Yeah, nice, nice. Uh, Dida, I want to ask about, uh, you mentioned about uh, Gemini or G G Gemini. Gemini, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, Gemini, Gemini, uh, because I, I saw uh, different variations of uh, how to yeah, pronounce yeah. it. But uh, anyway, uh, it's um, if someone doesn't know about Gemini, uh, it's a new model for, uh, and uh, Google uh, implemented to BART. Uh, I think uh, most people know uh AI tool Bart from Google uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, someone told me uh, by the way a few times that uh, Gemini is better than uh, chat GPT I compared I compared and sometimes I can get much better results with uh, chat GPT sometimes I can get better results with Bart but it depends but if I compare both uh, I don't know why but uh, uh, for me, ChatGPT works better than uh, Bart with Gemini after this update. Probably we will see uh, more updates soon. Uh, I don't know, but today I play a lot with uh, ChatGPT. But uh, for some topics, for example, even what I like on Bart, I can uh, draw infographic. You know, I don't know if someone can use this feature. Basically, you can write add mm -hmm. data. Uh, and uh, ask Bart, please uh, create this infographic. You can do with other tools like Canva, many others, but on Bart, uh, you don't need to use features, just write your prompt and get this infographic. Uh, it's not like complex infographic, but a simple one, mm -hmm. and uh, users love it. You don't need to, uh, I don't know, to crush their minds. Uh, can, can you tell about these tools, uh, ChatGPT and Bart? I think uh, most uh, um, of um, founders, um, uh, usually use these tools uh, they are not technical guys uh, i mean like who can listen to this podcast can you tell how to use this tool smarts to get great results from your experience uh yes i recently had this question asked uh, by another uh, local media here and uh what i usually say is that making a comparison between these two mod uh models is kind of a uh, I don't say I don't know how to say. Yes, they have the same intent, but technically they're different. I won't I won't dive into the technical details because, as mm -hmm. I say, we don't have this technical audience um, here watching us live. But uh, the thing is that um, Bart is in the era of the so-called multi-model mm -hmm. uh, models, um, or at least this is where you know, the Google team uh, put their efforts in. And uh, what they would like to achieve is that uh, um, actually Gemini is, uh, aims to mm, process uh, images um, to be able to write captions, to understand the images, 
uh, maybe to understand also videos, um, also images plus uh, plus videos plus audio, uh, even audio, yes, uh, or all of them in combination. Uh, while the uh, chat GPT is more uh, textual, is a more contextual uh, model, it works better for content um, and for writing uh, uh, good content uh, for maybe for classification as well. But I would say that even if you want to unleash the full potential, you still need to program it. Uh, if you want to use the official interface, you're kind of restricted both for uh, Gemini and for, I mean, the BART and uh, for ChatGPT. Uh, but how these two tools could be used for SEO, for ideas, first for ideas. They're full of ideas. Uh, they're full of uh, creativity because you can create uh, with the right prompts. And uh, I strongly recommend usually people when ask me how to use ChatGPT uh, for SEO, I, I usually say you, uh, learn prompt engineering. And when I say engineering, I don't mean start coding the, these prompts and so on. There's um, uh, There are specific tricks you can use, like uh, using specific triggering words in the prompts, um, uh, uh, using a specific way of constructing your prompts and so on. And of course, never forget that this is a model and it learns and feeds back uh, from your previous input, from your previous interaction with the model. So uh, at some point, maybe you won't get your great, your best answer uh, right at the beginning. But after some prompts, you will, you will get it. Uh, we should we shouldn't forget that these models could also hallucinate. This is absolutely normal because they don't have all the knowledge on the on the planet. And in this moment, I'm uh, I'm picturing on my mind uh, several data centers exploding if they have all of this knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, they would they won't wouldn't be able to handle these models. But uh, I would say that for SEO. Uh, we can use uh, ChatGPT for automa uh, automation, like uh, writing metadata, like writing our content. But uh, the idea here is don't forget, don't forget the human touch. Yes, yeah. I would always say um, ChatGPT is a great tool uh, to save your time of the day. Like you have, for example, you know we are our um, uh, everyday uh, everyday uh, schedule. Because uh, they are overwhelmed, uh, we are overflooded with tasks again and again and again every single day. So uh, we definitely need this kind of automation. But at the same time, never forget that uh, this is this is a math model behind the words. It, um, these models can feel, they can touch uh, the user, uh, they can express feelings, uh, other emotions, and so on. So um, you can use the uh, content written by ChatGPT as a basis, as a reference point, and you can go from there and you can add, add your touch, your human being touch. So I strongly believe in SEO that at least for the next five to 10 years, maybe, this human um, involvement will still persist uh, because um, I, will, I will repeat myself, machines cannot express emotions. And maybe they will never be able. Uh, the, the the era of the multimodal uh, models actually is trying to uh, replicate the human being emotions. Yes, Gemini is one of these models. Uh, even the, uh, the the researchers uh, they share this information after testing Gemini that uh, there are even application uh, applications already, even small ones on the web, trying to um, to get your emotions. I even today, um, I remember uh, the day that I uh, I stumbled upon a, a, a post on Instagram uh, because I'm part of uh, many different uh, channels about uh, and groups about programming. And I saw a, a guy who created an application, a small application, um, guessing the emotions. And what he shares is that uh, it's 50% uh, accurate. So machines are still machines let's keep them and let's uh, don't forget that they are machines 
uh, in the SEO part, we still need to uh, express the message of the brand. The brand is important. Uh, content forms the brand, the voice tone, the, the message to the audience. The content is not only uh, content strategy is not only for the search engines. It's also for the users. Search engines never buy. They don't. They don't request services. People do it. So we have to satisfy the user. Uh, the way how ChatGPT could help us is just to save us time, automate our tasks, and provide us with creativity. This is what I strongly believe, and this is what my day-to-day -day work shows me and proves me with ChatGPT and Bart. I also use Bart as well as you. Yeah, yeah valuable, valuable. Love it. And um, um, I agree, you need to learn from engineer, but I think uh, it's important to know uh, two more aspects. The first, you need to know how to write. Because um, mm -hmm. I saw when people without writing skills uh, are trying to create great text, uh, of it's, course. Uh, it's of course. tough because if you have no skills how to write, uh, ChatGPT will provide or Bart or any other tool will generate just text uh, and you can't check uh, the quality. A random of content, A random yeah. piece of content, yes. <laughs> and, and the, the second important thing is to know the topic. For example, I can create great content about accounting, about weight loss. Even I had this experience to lose weight, but that was personal experience. A few years ago, I decided <laughs> to do it and I found the way uh, with fasting and other aspects. But I can't teach others. I can't explain. Yeah, it's just personal experience. And I'm not an expert on this niche to explain uh, or create great content. Uh, I can't do it in accounting because I still use calculator spreadsheets. <laughs> I'm not, not an, a big expert on that. But uh, if you know how to write and if you know the topic, you can become prompt engineer. Then you can uh, write the right prompts. Then you can edit. And uh, I play with ChatGPT a lot. I, I can start one chat, uh, ask uh, to change my prompts, to uh, to write new requests, then I can close the chat, open new one, start from scratch. <laughs> so it's part of the process to find uh, what actually will work. And this tool is great. Uh, for example, uh, we use uh, ChatGPT to edit our text. Basically, I can write a bad copy with a lot of grammar mistakes. I don't care about these mistakes. I just care about quality of data, mm -hmm. valuable data, something new. Then I ask ChatGPT to uh, edit this uh, text for uh, big publications like Forbes, CNN, and uh, we use um, this editing tool uh, and got mentions on many big websites, including CNN, including Bloomberg, Investing.com, Business Insider, big websites, because we edit on ChatGPT. We don't write from scratch. Even mm -hmm. if I have the skills, we collect data, we get this data, ask ChatGPT, and today, we, we counted, uh, we paid like $6,000 for one press release to write and pitch one press release uh, to big PR agencies. Uh, these agencies are great, but they overcharge, you know, it's mm -hmm. a lot of money for one press release. So, but when we started this process uh, themselves, uh, uh, basically we uh, explained to our writers how to uh, use this uh, press release format. Uh, we explain uh, what we journalists want to get. Of course, we didn't get results from the first attempt. It, it, it took like uh, three, six, uh, three months to see first result, six months to get great results. And today mm -hmm. we get a lot better results uh, by having this process uh, than if we pay to PR agencies and we save like three uh, plus three million dollars good money you know for one project because we uh, pitch 12 press releases a week 12 press releases and it's possible it's possible just and uh, it's impossible if you do that this tool will decide all your problems not you need to collect data this tool is not ready not chat gpt not bart uh, but if you know how to write if you know how to edit if you know the topic uh then results will come yeah so uh, i agree uh did i want to ask about seo more uh, mm -hmm. you know um i want even more about the future of seo because uh, in 2008 when i started my journey we uh created content for search engines uh, I want to confess we did it because uh, we didn't know any other methods. And today we... That was, uh, that was uh, the truth. 
Yeah, uh, today these methods are obsolete. It's not because of Google. Uh, it's I think even more because of competition. Uh, may, 15 years ago, many companies ignored Google. Uh, many content creators ignored Google. Uh, but today, I don't know even one company who can ignore uh, digital marketing, uh, digital it's channels. It's impossible. Yeah, and uh, Google, of course, changed a lot of uh algorithms and uh, we cooperate with experts who can write about specific topic uh, i don't care if they use chat gpt or not i just care about quality you know if people can bring something new it works so um i want to ask about the future of uh aco because it, uh, the main question is i see when people can tell uh, seo is never that i think everything has the end everything including seo uh, but it takes time it takes time to change habits it takes time to uh, bring new environment people uh, um, including me it's tough for us to change our habits uh, but i do it uh, i start i started to use a lot more ai tools than google uh, before that, I use Google, I use YouTube, but today I can ask a lot of questions on mm -hmm. ChatGPT, on mm -hmm. Bart, and can get much better, faster results. I, uh, I, I, uh, I can share one example. I did it in other episodes. Uh, for example, I decided to buy new Tesla in Florida, and I searched on Google, can I use this uh, autopilot self-driver's feature uh, uh, mm -hmm. in Florida, because each state in the U.S. have different law. And I couldn't find a simple answer on Google, you know. Uh, so simple mm -hmm. question, but uh, I got a lot of information about Tesla, about electric cars, you know. But uh, I don't need it. I, I just needed a simple answer to simple question. And I got this answer on Bart for a few seconds. I, I can share a lot of other examples. Uh, and for me, uh, this... Um, 10 blue links uh, are obsolete compared to uh, environment that we have today. For example, another example, Amazon. Amazon uh, phone that people, uh, buyers, usually read uh, maximum three reviews uh, of products. 90% uh, of people can read uh, 10 reviews, but not more. So, but products can have 1,000 reviews. People have no time to read these reviews. And Amazon uses AI to summarize uh, all reviews that people leave basically you can read just one review uh, it's mm -hmm. a summary of all other reviews uh, the so -called and, text summarization of the language yes, model yes yes and uh, i think it's the same with google if uh, i shared my example of, uh, if it's tough to find an answer and uh, the main goal of google to bring you uh, information as fast as possible. It's the main uh, goal of Google because on social media is different. Social media uh, wants to retain you as much uh, as longer. So if they retain, they earn a lot more money. But on Google, they want uh, uh, you uh, to bring relevant link when you get everything what you need and to leave this uh, search engine. So probably it's obsolete uh, today if, if chatbots can reply to this question. And uh, my main question about blogging, you know, we uh, we write a lot of blog posts. We still do mm -hmm. it. Uh, it's mm -hmm. powerful channel. It brings a lot of traffic. But yes, what about course. the future? If chatbots will reply to these questions much faster. Uh, when I ask my son, please search on Google, he uses TikTok. He doesn't care about Google. So uh, I'm not sure about the future. 12% uh, uh, of people today you uh, use uh, chatbots than google 12 percent of people it's for an year it's just a year and m many change so what, what do you think about future of seo especially blogging content so uh as you said um everything has its end and that's absolutely normal um because there nothing is eternal on this planet uh, even even us as a human um, society, but um, I wouldn't say that SEO is going away uh, in the future. It will just evolve. I will of course uh, mention John Mueller <laughs> words, <laughs> but actually actually he is absolutely right. It will evolve. And um, uh, what I strongly believe and I see it's already. Um, it's already uh, here in the U.S. results of Google. Uh, it is that the generative uh, AI search is here, but it's not fully rolled out, let's say that way. 
uh, it it will never be because it's this is a very long journey uh, when it comes to the software engineering aspect aspect until uh, all of these data Google have um, that the, the Google has to be um, uh, uh, let's say uh, to be reprocessed so it will work with this uh, sub generative experience but when it comes to the blogging part this will uh, be uh, this will be even more important in the future even more and it will be important how we write the content how we structure it what will be the content in uh, architecture content infrastructure how we uh, format the content and uh, actually and how we uh, uh, follow the syntax rules uh, from, uh, let's say, the NLP, the natural language processing point of view. Because maybe you have seen and you mentioned some uh, some of these uh, these cases where if you type a specific query, uh, Google will put down these 10 blue links. They will go way, way, way down uh, compared to what we used to, see, uh, where we used to see them. Uh, for most of the queries now and for most of the countries around the world, they are uh, still the first results we can see uh, besides the future snippets and so on. But in the USA, uh, the situation is a little bit different now. Uh, not for all queries, but from what I saw, um, approximately for about 40% of the queries, you can see um, generated AI results where you have summary of content coming from websites. This is a very important point because it's coming from the website. These websites are credited so you can see once you click on an image or uh, uh, or a specific element of the, uh, this uh, new uh, search uh, ge uh, generative uh, experience, you can go to a specific website. Uh, of course, things will be uh, totally different when it comes to the ranking positions and for people obsessed by them because um, uh, I would. Uh, I always have to say, who will we do at, at, at position one in this situation? You, you, you have a, let's say, a dashboard. You will have a dashboard full of different elements where you can click here and there. You can interact with these widgets. Let's say them search widgets. So who will be first position? I would say nobody. Uh, we will be uh, uh, fighting for being included into these widgets because they will um, get most of the impressions, most of the clicks. And um, in my opinion, the, the positions won't be that much important uh, like they are uh, currently. Uh, uh, of course, the second thing that will be important for us in the era of the search generative uh, experience will be the HGE, how it is abbreviated now. Uh, uh, it will be the search uh, user experience. It's important now, but it will become even more important mm -hmm. because, uh, um, yeah, and we can even see it now. Um, Google rewards websites with good traffic, with good uh, user experience. I mean, um, if, if they follow the EAT uh, requirements and uh, if they are really trustworthy, if they show the authoritativeness, expertise, uh, in, in specific fields, and uh, if they um, if they follow uh, uh, if, if, if they if they have really good comprehensive content, the, the thorough content where they can show the expertise, where they can show that they are really good experts in their uh, fields, and uh, how this reflects to the SEO. Of course, it reflects because you keep the user longer way, uh, you keep the interest because you kind of made the user to uh, to visit more pages on your website you lower down your bounce rate uh, uh, because this is inevitable part uh, if you keep the user longer uh, time you won't have that high a uh, bounce rate and at the same time you can see that the page views also uh, go uh, higher and that's absolutely uh, expected i would say because uh, the engaging content with the engaging uh, i would say these new javascript frameworks and elements you can build uh, like for example let's say you mentioned the weight loss you can build a very interesting quiz in your blog post for example where you can return a result to the user and this will engage the user uh, to stay more time on uh, on your page. So this will be rewarding uh, by Google. It will be really well appreciated. And for sure, people with this kind of interesting websites who, um, uh, who spend lots of time to create their content 
uh, like you mentioned, uh, you create it with uh, AI, but you also put your efforts on these pieces of content so you can give them the human being touch and the expertise needed. Uh, these pieces of content will be rewarded. I don't know if you remember, but uh, SEM Rush they shared uh, their annual uh, ranking factors. Um, I actually hate factors. Uh, I would say ranking signals. Um, uh, when it comes to, to, to Google search engine. And uh, one of the most important signals they have uh, observed is the relevance. So this thing by itself talks to us that uh, the relevance will be the key. So the content will continue to be important and the things will continue to be, uh, to follow the direction of the better content strategies. So if you, we have to put more time. We have to spend um, our, um, we have to put our efforts uh, mostly on the content part of the websites, not uh, so much on, uh, I strongly believe that we, maybe we won't care that much uh, for the technical part compared to the content. Because actually this is what the user engages with when it comes uh, when it comes to when they uh, uh, when they visit their uh, your website, they will engage with the content. They will engage with the brand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So no. this is the future. I'm uh, in my opinion, this is the future of the SEO. But I wouldn't say that the SEO is going away. No, yeah. it's not going. It will very much evolve, and I think that in front of us is a very big leaf of this evolution. Uh, in the near future, the evolution uh, where we will transmit, we will transfer all the the majority of our efforts into the content part of our websites and the quality, the site-wide quality. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I don't know. You know, uh, I'm so bad to predict the future. I tried a few times with crypto <laughs> and I failed. <laughs> so today uh, I like that I can't predict the future. Uh, and uh, but um, I usually on the second stage. Basically, I can't create ChatGPT, I can't create Google, but I can use these technologies to adapt fast, whatever happens. And marketers on TV and radio didn't lose their jobs, they adapted to digital. And uh, we need to mm -hmm. adapt to new technologies, we need to think fast, uh, and mm -hmm. you will be fine if you do it faster than your competitors. Just learn what whatever happens, uh, follow Dido Grigora, follow Anatoly Litovsky, follow many uh, great experts online to learn from them, read news, and yeah, uh, if you uh, adapt fast, then you will be fine, at least uh, before Terminators, when they kill will all human beings, we, we, we still have time, you know. <laughs> that's a that's a very important skill, actually, you mentioned to adapt fast. The fast learners, let's say it that way, uh, they will be uh, really well rewarded. They will be on the rise in the near future. Uh, so even people who learn a little bit slower, they will need to adapt to, to become fast learners uh, because I as I said, I believe this, this evolution uh, to the, the generative AI search, it will be a very big leap for us. Mm -hmm. uh, according to your reply to this question, uh, can you advise uh, how to adapt to this possible future? Okay, uh, you, uh, SEO is not going away. Uh, in your opinion, but uh, it's evolving. Um, it's evolving all the time, uh, even today. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And the process will be much faster in the future. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, for example, um, uh, I remember when I started my SEO, we wrote content for search engines. Today we write only for human beings, but optimize for search engines. Probably in the future, uh, keyword research will be obsolete. I don't know, uh, but uh, I, I can uh, assume it's possible uh, uh, according to technologies that Google can recognize user intent, whatever they write, to mm -hmm. recognize the best content to show them. And uh, uh, I'm interested more about blogging. Um, uh, here's the reason, because we write a lot of blog posts. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, I remember when feature snippers appealed, uh, many content creators complained, wow, Google steal our content, what's going on? Uh, and uh, 
I promise you, you will miss this time when <laughs> chatbots will steal all your content without even linking. Because on feature snippets, you still you got the link, you, you get this this link today, but uh, chatbots just rewrite <laughs> still entire content without linking, and you will miss mm -hmm. this time. Uh, anyway, I want to ask about blog content. Um, if I can find about Tesla uh, self drivers feature on chatbots, uh, I can ask a lot of other questions that uh, chatbots can provide better experience than I get on Google. Uh, I mean, like um, uh, blog offers spend so much time to craft this content, to create great content. It takes time. I know from personal experience, we pay a lot to great content creators who can write for Forbes, investor pay their big websites, and we still invest a lot. But I switch my attention. I switch. I mean, like I uh, don't. Uh, I. Uh, I mean, like, uh, I still write in this blog post, but mm -hmm. uh, write less. And uh, we usually pay attention to create simple tools with AI. And it works well. We create calculators, converters, many, many other things. It generates uh, more traffic. And um, I think uh, chatbots uh, can't uh, steal this traffic. At least uh, today, I don't see this possibility. Uh, I'm not sure that uh, uh, ChatGPT or Bart is interested to take all possible calculators online uh, and uh, we get data even from uh, Bart uh, by using API. I want to ask about blogging content because uh, I see when mm -hmm. uh, companies pay so much on attention on that. Uh, can you advise what to do, how to write blog posts and uh, um, your opinion about that? Do we need to uh, still write? Do we need to decrease? Do we need to switch attention? So any tips about that? I would say increase. In, in mm. is it at least in the future, yes. Uh, but I would say also um, develop strategies smartly. Uh, follow the user intent. This is very important because, as I said, we have to satisfy the users. And happy users with good content they will uh, be rewarded with good clicks uh, on our Google Search Console and impressions. Um, so um, the good, uh, the well-written blog post usually starts with a good plan. The good outline. Um, uh, I teach in an, uh, very often in academies, SEO academies here locally. Uh, at our company, we have Serpa Cut. Uh, if somebody is interested, I can share a link so you can see the uh, the website. But the the thing is that um, what I mean is that uh, the initial outline, the initial research before writing uh, a blog post is very important. Also. Uh, one of the questions that usually uh, Google put on their table is uh, on our table actually is uh, the purpose of the page. But not, I see that not, not so many people understand it properly. It's actually where this page stays in the overall user journey, where it stays when it comes to the uh, user intent and also where it stays in your semantic network, let's say that way, so semantic structure of your website. Because just writing, uh, well, yes, maybe you will gain some traffic, but well, it won't be you, the traffic you're after. It won't be the, uh, the buyer persona you're looking after uh, and uh, what you will um, actually, uh, this traffic will be pointless to you. To, you, to your blog, to your business. So uh, a good plan is important. Thinking about the user is important. Thinking about the relevance also is important. Here comes the intersection between the user with the intent and the search engines because search engines requires us to include these specific terms so we can show that we are really experts in a specific topic, let's say that way. These terms could be entities. They could be any specific uh, related phrases, questions. Uh, they could be specific conceptions. So around these conceptions, we have to use the appropriate terms. And along with these appropriate terms, also maybe the supporting entities and the supporting knowledge around them and so on. We can still use Google to research many of these things. Uh, we can use Python like me. If you know it, of course, and you, or you can gain this skill, uh, or you can use third-party tools. There are so many. We can just research. We can ask a chatbot, of course, uh, to do it for us or to mention it, uh, mention for us some tools. But yeah, uh, as I say, and uh, when we when we have these um, uh, regular meetings with uh, my team, we usually talk about the different outlines. So how we plan, and uh, we usually prepare the outlines of the blog posts. 
we find the place of every single topic within the whole semantic network of the website and we think about the user and the mm -hmm. relevance. So the user should be all the way satisfied, down all the way um, happy because uh, we can, of course, we, uh, everybody today can um, write a blog post with ChatGPT, let's say, we can publish it on the website and that's all. But in the end of the day, this is a machine, uh, machine generated content. Uh, maybe it will provide some value to somebody, but might not provide the needed value for, let's say, the more um, experienced audience. So in this situation, the human touch is important. That's why this is, I say it is the, inter, the intersection between the search engines and the users. And we always live there. We are always between these two worlds. I mean, the SEO experts. Uh, between the worlds of the search engines where uh, the math is uh, preliminary and uh, the users where people have their expectations, they would like to see something specific in the content. But yeah, these are the three steps. Plan good, uh, create a good outline, think about the user, think about the relevance, and think about relevancy and also think about where your page, your blog post stays, Where what is the place of your blog post within your whole semantic network of your website. Yeah, nice, nice. And yeah, I agree. I agree about that. Even uh, New York Times, Forbes, Washington Post, mm -hmm. these big publications appeal before Google. So uh, I mean, like uh, you need to write content that people want to read uh, and you will win at any environment. For example, I love uh, reading all books from Jack London. He wrote these books 100 years ago. The quality mm -hmm. is great. Uh, and uh, if I read any of his books, I can live on this book. I can forget about meal, water, anything, because I'm on this book, a uh, specific book. And uh, if you, uh, the main goal of any content is to be, uh, I don't know, it's not only about value. You need to write non-boring content. If you create non-boring content that people want to read, that people want to ask more, Demand mm -hmm. more. Please bring me more. I, I remember mm -hmm. this book uh, from uh, um, mm -hmm. Harry Potter. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, when Joe jo Rowling uh, uh, wrote this book, all these books, people ask, please write new books. <laughs> we want to get them. It's not about SEO. And if you uh, today you need to craft your skills to win um, brand recognition, to uh, create this um, feeling mm -hmm. i mm -hmm. want more uh, to to make your uh, readers uh, greedy to your content uh, please i need new insights mm -hmm. so uh, and this content will win at any environment it doesn't matter what yes. kind of future will be. and when it comes to the future you ask me uh, maybe at some point uh, the content writers will need to understand at least the basics of the nlp all mm -hmm. i mean is um uh, the basic conceptions so they can properly structure um, their sentences, their paragraphs. Um, uh, they can find the logical connection between the paragraphs and um, syntactically they can um, build the sentences in a proper way so they can make the life of these sophisticated algorithms uh, better, which will be also rewarding. But it's too early for this uh, to, to, to step on this stage. But at some point, this will be needed. Of course, nobody will expect to uh, expect uh, uh, from them to be experts in this uh, area and so on. But learn and reading a little bit in this area uh, won't hurt for sure. It will help them. I don't mean read the technical part, start programming NLP applications. Uh, although most of the time when I show somebody something <laughs> like this, they they're um, uh, they gain the patience patient for um, for start uh, to start building this kind of applications. But um, if you want to continue, if your passion is content writing, then at some point maybe it's worth to read one or two articles around the NLP and what is NLP at all, because this is the foundation. In the end yeah. of the day, this is the foundation. And everything stands, I will say now, something that uh, nobody will, um, will believe me, but uh, uh, actually, do you know when uh, uh, when the AI dates from? 
Yeah, yeah, nice, nice. It dates actually, it dates actually from the 50 years of the previous century, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which is totally amazing. With uh, the first chatbot called Elisa. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yes, <well. laughs> yeah, cool, cool. Uh, yeah, Nida, uh, I have two questions left, important mm -hmm. questions for my okay. audience. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, let me explain who will uh, consume the first uh, reply. Um, founders of companies who mm -hmm. are looking for ways to cooperate with great experts, but they need to learn the basic. And uh, from my experience, uh, you need to understand what it is, uh, how you can get benefits from that. For example, if you want to uh, hire an SEO agency, uh, you need to understand why we need to create high quality content, how mm -hmm. to do it, what yes. high quality means, how, why it's important to get uh, authority, trust, many different aspects. Uh, and um, I have students who are looking for ways to learn from scratch especially today when we have mm -hmm. AI, when we have Python, SEO, different uh, insights. So basically, I want to ask you, if you started today from scratch, forget about your 12, the, uh, the 20 years of experience sorry, <laughs> and uh, forget about SEO. You know, Google exists. You use Google to search, <laughs> but you have no idea how it, it ranks websites. And uh, yeah, uh, what will you do today if you need to start from scratch? completely from scratch uh for sure um i would start with reading some books uh, immediately from amazon mm -hmm. there are some really great examples uh i would say that uh, there there was one book it's still um it's still in the market uh it is the art of ico uh, written by eric Eng and uh, stefan spencer this is one of the most foundational I would say maybe the foundations of SEO. Uh, whenever I get back to this book, I find something new and something interesting rereading it. So uh, it's kind of one of these books written uh, uh, with an um, eye view to the future. Let's say that way. With, the, with our eyesight, our eyes turns into the into the future trends. So everything there is very common. Uh, it's like a big summary of common rules so i will definitely start from there i will read the book i will start uh, maybe following uh, some articles reading the uh, google documentation 100 percent i will go to the um, google ai research website which is amazing uh, of course immediately you won't understand many 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 things but this is how this is why we have search engines like google like uh, let's say bing dig the go and so on uh so we can uh, you can research these terms you can find additional articles so you can uh, understand the conceptions but this is how i will i will start and the bill slavsky blog is still available so um he was one of these great people who was able to transform all of this difficult knowledge into a very easy consumable um uh, easy for understanding easy for consuming easy for uh, realizing i would say that way um uh, semantic stuff uh when it comes to uh, how the google algorithms uh, uh, work so i will definitely go from there from these uh points uh um, these there uh, i would say three domain knowledge uh, no, uh, knowledge sources uh, so i can grasp the foundation of the seo so i'll start with the book I will go and read the documentation of Google. I will read the Google blogs, the AI section. Uh, well, it's a whole website, actually. And uh, I will definitely go to the Blue Sasuke website because it's still here. It's called SEO by the Sea. And uh, we can really learn a lot. Part of these things uh, are still, um, they're still applicable even today. And they will be in the future. Yeah, they will be definitely in the future. Of course, there are so many websites like Search Engine Journal, like Search Engine Land, Search Engine Watch, where you can read lots of stuff. There are uh, articles for beginners. There are also articles for advanced people and so on. Your website is very good as well with your podcasts uh, where people can uh, learn from other people. But I will also say one very important aspect. Follow the influencers in the niche. You will definitely learn a lot. Of course, 
once you see their profiles, you will see that they share lots of mixed stuff like beginner stuff, beginner stuff uh, intermediate and advanced, but slowly within the time, we will start understanding. So this is how I will start. Nice, nice. So yeah. At least today, uh, it was not the same case uh, 22 years ago because I didn't have the, we didn't have actually the influencers. Yeah. Uh, Bill Slavsky started around 2006. Uh, Eric King uh, with, uh, uh, it was Perficient Digital. Before that, I don't remember the exact name. Sorry for this, but um, he had a blog. It actually doesn't exist anymore. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, he started sharing lots of uh, interesting information there. But we didn't have that many sources. So yeah. now the world is for uh, the web, world web, web wide world is full of options for learning. And of course, if you want practical experience, I strongly recommend Udemy. Mm -hmm. There are many courses there. They are cheap most of the time. So you can create your own websites. You can start up, uh, uh, applying your new skills. You can observe the results. So mm -hmm. if you make any mistakes, you can get back. You can learn from these mistakes um, because part of the SEO job uh, work is uh, trial and error. So nice. at some point, maybe you can you 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 have you have uh, mistaken something but you will learn from this mistakes this is important yeah you remind me about bill slavsky he spoke on this podcast uh, and we uh agreed about a new episode uh and this episode uh yeah we scheduled on friday but he passed uh a few what days uh, before that so yeah that was terrible news um I, I, um, and i remember when i watched this news wow bill slavsky pass well, what's going on i didn't believe because we, we spoke uh, before that a few days ago uh, discuss about uh, podcast uh, to bring new value yeah he, he was a great guy um and um, you mentioned about Steven, uh, Steven Spencer. He spoke on my podcast as well. I, mm -hmm. I love his podcast. He he can bring new valuable insights. Yeah, uh, he's a good guy in New Zealand. He can teach a lot about SEO. Uh, and yeah, uh, I think it's important to learn and practice. I completely agree. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, for me personally, I prefer to practice more than learn. Uh, I like to learn. And Most of the people prefer it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I can sacrifice my learning by practicing, and uh, I can't learn a teeny percent of existing knowledge, skills to listen all great podcasts. I can't read all great books. I can't uh, consume all these blog posts from Search Engine Journal, uh, Land, uh, other blogs because I have no time. But uh, if I need to choose one thing, I prefer to act. I prefer to practice, to craft my skills. Uh, uh, of course, it's important to learn, to know the door that you need to open. But when you know the door, <laughs> you need to practice uh, because you can learn a lot, but without practice, uh, nothing works. <laughs> you know, uh, SEO is very much interconnected with the mm -hmm. software engineering. Once you uh, dig deeper into the software engineer, you very uh, uh, you, you realize it very soon. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why I would like to say one favorite sentence uh, when it comes to uh, what you say uh, that you love practicing over learning. Uh, you know, Dennis Ritchie, Dennis Ritchie is actually the creator of the C language. It mm -hmm. is one of the oldest languages on the planet. And I love one sentence. Uh, he said, the best way to learn a programming language is to start building programs with it mm -hmm. it's the same with seo yeah the best yes yes it's actually it's this is actually the case with uh, programming languages and with seo you can't say you know you understand seo until you start doing it yeah exactly own. exactly 100 you remind me another quote from gary b when he said about building the biggest uh, uh the, the biggest building in the city so Two methods. The first method is to start building uh, the biggest mm -hmm. <laughs> building mm -hmm. in the city. And the second, to watch how others can do it. <laughs> so you have no other choices. And uh, Didam, uh, I have my mm -hmm. final question. Um, mm -hmm. 
Um, it's personal question about your daily routine, about mm -hmm. your schedule, prioritization, mm -hmm. uh, and it's important mm -hmm. to for choosing priorities because um, we have many mm -hmm. things to do. I have a hundred things to do. I can't do all these things. Uh, I usually uh, use uh, three aspects. The first aspect, if uh, I see it's important, I do myself. If I I see it's less important or I have less skills than someone else, I delegate if I mm -hmm. can. And the rest mm -hmm. I can skip. I just forget about, okay, I can't do all things. I can't earn all money in the world. But uh, for me, it's important to prioritize, delegate or to do myself or to skip. So uh, can you tell about your daily routine? How you start your morning? How your uh, day is going on? Uh, how you prioritize things, choose priorities? And how you balance between family and your business job? Wow, this is a very, <laughs> very interesting question. I think that um, we all strive to uh, get that best balance between the free time, the time for hobbies, the time for family, uh, just for uh, the time for us, the personal time uh, and, uh, and the, the time for our jobs and job tasks. Uh, my routine is uh, very dynamic, if I have to, if I have to say that way. Uh, at the moment, I'm uh, along with the SEO. I'm also a computer science student, and um, lots of coding is involved <laughs> in my mm -hmm. routine. Uh, but also coding for um, uh, for uh, for uh, coding solutions for my content team. So um, half of the day is coding for uh, solutions for my team, and the other half of the day is working on. SEO tasks related, where the AI helps me, the tools I have created also, they help me. Uh, but I will also find some books I have to fix. Uh, uh, or uh, I will listen to the feedback of my team so I can improve something, or maybe we have a problem on a project about something, so we have to fix it. Uh, I don't say I have a, uh, any I have any specific fixed routine. Uh, instead of the um, uh, of the hours where uh, I have um, let's say three to four dedicated hours for coding, where well, I prefer not to be disturbed because coding is a very involving uh, activity, and uh, you uh, the thinking process, the mental process is uh, very active during that um, the, uh, because you work with your logic, and I think about the optimal ways how to do these tools and or how to do a specific task for the university and so on. Uh, but during the other time, I prioritize. I will always prioritize uh, from the most important projects, and I mean when I mean most impor important are the projects according to their face, according to the communication with the clients. Uh, uh, at uh, which stage we are with the clients, uh, what kind of problems do we have? Are they major problems or they can they can be put away for some time or we can, let's say, postpone them for two or three weeks uh, in the near future and so on. Uh, mainly I will prioritize according to the, mm, to the importance of the tasks. So if I have to answer this question, this is how I usually organize my day. But for sure, I will also, um, along with the coding, I will also spend one or two hours per day to uh, read the new information, to read some new articles uh, and uh, see different aspects. I also follow some influencers into the SEO with AI and Python field where I can see some new solutions or I can help somebody with open source contribution. Uh, uh, to a specific, uh, uh, let's say, a uh, specific solution. I can do it even during the weekend sometime if I have the creativity or the idea to do it. So it's very dynamic. I would say it's very dynamic. Nice, nice. Love it, love it. Uh, it's a big pleasure to get on my show, to learn from you. I love the ex experience. So fun, valuable. Uh, I'm going to follow you uh, because... Thank you. To update the skills that I have, I recommend to anyone to follow Dido on social media. Uh, you can find links in the description below. By the way, tell the best way how to keep learning from you, how to reach out to you, how to follow you. The best way, so uh, usually I'm very active on LinkedIn. Okay, Most nice. of the time, yes. Um, I really love it and I love what, uh, what happened to LinkedIn. Now it's a more, I would say, not so boring social media. It's... Uh -huh. 
a little bit more engaging now. Uh, you can do lots of stuff. You can make researches uh, via LinkedIn. You can share articles. And I'm active on Facebook. So if somebody wants to connect with me, use um, use my uh, Facebook profile, use my LinkedIn, or maybe my email, which is dg at serpac.com. Nice, nice. Uh, yeah, I opened your LinkedIn profile. You are super active to share. Uh, repost content, valuable content. Mm -hmm. So, guys, mm -hmm. uh, I it's mixed follow. actually. It's, it, it, the my my content is actually is mixed there between the social uh, uh, between the software engineering and SEO. But I try to keep the I uh, try to keep the balance between uh, nice. both of them because I know that I have both of the audiences there, the software awesome. engineers and the SEOs. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Uh, okay, guys, thanks a lot for listening or watching us, whatever you choose. Uh, you can uh, listen us on uh, Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, watch on YouTube. Um, yeah, you can open my website. You can open social media accounts from Dido Grigorov to learn more about him, to follow him. It's a big mistake if you ignore it because you can see a lot of valuable insights. Okay, guys, love you. See you.